The opening scene in a comic book movie, like any movie, is incredibly important. It establishes the tone and mood of the piece from there on out, and crucially has to have a high level of impact to keep viewers glued for the next two hours. Given how fickle comic book fans are notorious for being, that's us, it's important that the opening scene lets viewers know what they're in for. As such, a trend has emerged in comic book films. If you don't have a fantastic opening scene, you probably don't have a fantastic film. And with that in mind, I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are the 10 greatest opening scenes in comic book movie history. Number 10. Bloodbath. Blade. The film begins as a man is lured into a club by a sexy, seductress, lady woman, man lady. And for a minute, everything seems fine. That is, until blood starts raining down from the ceiling and the guy realizes he's in the wrong place. He's the one human in a nest of vampires. Just as he's about to be devoured by the lustful and hungry and probably sexy vampires, Blade shows up right on cue and starts cleaning house with a shotgun. Wesley Snipes totally nails the scene, easily establishing himself as a badass to be reckoned with, and ending on a fiery note as he sets one vampire aflame and leaves him crisping up for the police to find later. Delicious. Number 9. Nagasaki – The Wolverine Taking place in a Nagasaki POW camp during World War II, a young Japanese soldier named Yashida notices two bombers overhead and raises an alarm, freeing the American prisoners in the process, Wolverine included, who insists that he join him in a well to escape the blast. Yoshida decides to do so just as Nagasaki is blown to bits by the bomb, but he's not out of danger yet. Logan then uses a metal door to shield Yoshida from the blast further, but it can only do so much, and the fire begins to burn Logan's flesh. Yoshida safe, the fire dies down and he looks on in utter amazement as Logan's skin quickly begins to heal. Before we know it, he's as good as new. A brilliant setup for what's to come and also the most impressive visual depiction of Wolverine's healing factor. Number 8. The customer is always right. Sin City The opening scene of Sin City confesses everything about the film right off the bat, that it's going to be visually stunning, sexy, dangerous and a loving homage to the noir films of decades past. Josh Hartnett plays the salesman, a charming young gentleman who makes small talk with the customer, which we presume at first to be a come on. Soon enough, however, the tone of the conversation changes and it's clear that she has a problem to face up to. Can he be the man to help her? The two kiss, and then out of nowhere the salesman shoots her with a silenced pistol, and it's over. The salesman then utters a sick quip as we zoom out to reveal the stunning cityscape, complete with a funky bass tune before it transforms into the movie's title. Number 7. The Mixtape – Guardians of the Galaxy One of my favorite Marvel films to be churned out of Disney's dream factory in the last few years, affairs kick off in Guardians of the Galaxy with a fairly gut-wrenching scene where a young mixtape-listening Peter Quill visits his mother's bedside as she passes away after battling cancer. Distraught, Quill runs outside and is promptly abducted by an alien ship before we fast forward to a moody opening on a destroyed planet. Adult Quill, or Star-Lord Man, then removes his mask slash helmet thing and starts dancing around to the tunes on his Walkman. It has gravitas, it's very daft, and it perfectly sets up the remainder of the film. Here's a picture of Groot. Number 6. Young Magneto X-Men First Class The most compelling enigma in the X-Men franchise is the past of Magneto and how he went from a concentration camp in Poland to become one of the world's most feared mutants. X-Men First Class begins by offering a window into this question, with a young Eric Lanscher using his magnetic powers to bend a fence when he ends up separated from his mother. He's knocked out by a guard and brought to Dr. Schmidt, who wants to see Eric show off more of his powers by moving a Nazi coin with his mind. Eric can't do it, so Schmidt gives him an incentive by having his mother hauled in and giving him until the count of three to move the coin. When Eric fails again, Schmidt shoots his mother dead, causing Eric to completely lose it, levitating all the metal in the office and killing two guards. That's not good doctoring, Schmidt. I suppose you could call him a shit evil Nazi doctor for- oh, oh no, hang on. He's an evil Nazi doctor. Sounds about right, actually. Number 5. The Destruction of Krypton – Man of Steel Say what you will about Zack Snyder's take on Superman, I suppose you could call it a shit Superman film for wankers, hashtag shit Superman film for wankers. But his opening sequence was a visually stunning, thrilling way to kick off the film. The very first moment we witness is Lara giving birth to Kal-El, but her and Jor-El have no time to celebrate as Krypton's unstable core is going to result in imminent obliteration. In a crucial moment that only reveals its importance later on, Jor-El then allows the Codex, the genetic information of the Kryptonian race, to be absorbed into Kal-El's body and prepares Kal-El a ship to take him to Earth. At that moment he's attacked by Zod who mortally wounds him, and as Zod is taken into custody and banished into the Phantom Zone, he warns Lara that he will find Kal-El eventually. Ooh, 
Scary. What are you going to do? Level an entire city, killing thousands of people? Oh, oh, my mistake. Number four, opening credits, Watchmen. Set to Bob Dylan's iconic tune, The Times They Are a Changin', the sequence trawls through countless indelible moments from history, such as the end of World War II, JFK's assassination, and the moon landing, but gives them all a gleefully subversive slant. We see two women kissing as the war ends rather than the famous male-female picture. Eddie Blake, aka the comedian, is shown to be the gunman on the grassy knoll firing at JFK, and as Neil Armstrong lands on the moon, he is greeted by Dr. Manhattan. Then, it's revealed that in this universe, Richard Nixon continues to get re-elected, while the public asks bluntly, who watches the Watchmen, as an angry protester throws a Molotov cocktail through a store window. Number three, Nightcrawler attacks the White House, X-Men 2. X2 gets off to a blinding start that instantly makes it superior to the fine original, as Nightcrawler attempts to assassinate the President of the United States. Naturally, being a blue dude who can teleport around, he's not the most inconspicuous figure, and after disabling a Secret Service agent, he finds himself having to take out a whole fleet of backup guards. The use of Mozart's Requiem combines with the visual brilliance to make an intense sequence in which Nightcrawler takes the security detail to school and breaches the Oval Office. Nightcrawler then takes out any remaining guards and pins the president to his own table, pulling out a knife with his tail as he does so. However, one barely conscious security guard manages to pop a bullet in his arm, startling him and causing him to promptly leave. However, he leaves the knife impaled in the table with a note reading, Mutant Freedom Now. Number 2. Bane's Mid-Air Escape – The Dark Knight Rises after a brief word from Jim Gordon on Harvey Dent's demise, we cut to a CIA agent who's taken three hooded men aboard his plane to interrogate them about Bane's whereabouts. When one of the men speaks up, his bizarre vocal pattern indicates he's no ordinary man, and when the agent removes his hood, it's revealed to be Bane himself. Bane explains how he intended to be captured, and that now he's going to crash the plane with no survivors. And so, Bane's ingenious plan blasts into action, as another plane latches itself onto the plane there inside, and four of Bane's mercenaries assault the plane, killing all the CIA passengers, leaving just Bane, his men, and Dr. Pavel. Bane then siphons some of Pavel's blood into a corpse they load onto the plane to make the CIA believe Pavel is dead, before hooking up to another plane in a harness. And at that moment, the CIA plane is detached, dropping to the ground below while Pavel and Bane saw through the air, still hooked onto the other plane. Number 1. The Joker's Bank Robbery – The Dark Knight – How Could It Not Be? Here, a number of men in clown masks rob a bank in Gotham owned by the mob, with a comment made that the Joker himself, despite orchestrating the heist, has decided not to participate himself, which doesn't sit well with the robbers. As the robbery begins, the robbers all start killing each other to take a bigger share of the pie before the manager of the bank brandishes a shotgun and takes the guys on, explaining that stealing from a mob bank isn't so smart. They wound the bank manager, and at this point there are three robbers left. One is hit by the school bus that crashes into the bank to steal the money, and then one clown shoots the other in the face once the cash is loaded up. The wounded manager then pipes up, challenging the final robber, who removes his mask, revealing himself to be the Joker, uttering the immortal phrase, Whatever doesn't kill you, makes you stranger. The scene ends with the Joker leaving a grenade in the manager's mouth, attached to the back door of the school bus, pulling the pin as he drives away. And that's our list. Are there any great opening scenes you particularly enjoyed? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can even follow me here on Twitter if you fancy. I'm Ben from What Culture, and thanks for watching.